All right, FTM Phantom Crypto Review, your FTM coin. Is Phantom a good investment? That's what we're going to talk about today because Phantom, it's another beast that's sleeping right now. So it's been a while since I did one of these, but you know what it is. I read the white paper so you don't have to, so you know everything that you need to know about phantom crypto because this is the phantom crypto review show today anyways this was brought on by several comments mainly on solana videos about ftm and i really took my attention when my mentor started mentioning ftm we're still waiting on a potential pullback because right now i think we think it's a little bit too high to buy into but my mentor from miami academy did say that this coin has the potential to do what solana did so if you missed out on solana you better not miss out on this one you know what to do next smash the like button smash the subscribe button and now we can finally get into the video well, first we have to do an overview so phantom is a directed acyclic graph smart contract platform that intends to solve the scalability issue Issues that plague existing public blockchains. Phantom also adopts a new protocol called Latches, which maintains consensus that is supposed to be integrated with the Phantom Opera chain. So the goal really is to let applications build on top of this Phantom Opera chain to enjoy instant transactions and near zero transaction costs for all users. So if all of that meant nothing to you, then don't worry because that's what we're going to talk about next. We're going to talk about why Phantom. Well, it really starts with the problem of blockchains. They have three major problems that I want to touch upon in this video. One being scalabilities. So with blockchains like Ethereum and Bitcoin, all nodes must verify and store a single block at a time, which leads to longer block times and limits on the block size so that performance will be limited. So basically, the more transactions that require processing, the worse the performance becomes on the network. So if that is too confusing to you, then just imagine this. Just imagine you're going to McDonald's. Now, there is only one cashier in that McDonald's because of this great resignation problem that's happening in the United States. But there is only one cashier. Now, there's a lineup of 500 people. That is a scalability problem. If they added just one more person in there, the line's going to go much more faster, right? If they added five more people in there, that line is going to be quick, right? So that's the problem that is facing public blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum right now. The second problem is with fees. So fees include confirmation fees that are paid to miner on top of block rewards themselves. And these fees really incentivizes the miners and the consensus participants to help secure the network, which we need to do. So in our cashier customer example, let's imagine that there are some customers that are willing to pay a tip or a fee in order to skip the line at McDonald's. And the more people that are willing to pay that fee, they will have to increase the fees to get priority on who gets to go first, who gets to skip the line. And those who don't pay a fee will stay hungry forever because there are people willing to pay you in order to get on top of the line. But if you're not willing to pay, well, you're just going to have people skipping the line ahead of you. So you're never going to get your Big Mac. And three, the problem of historical data. Basically, we can only do so much with the history of the transactions that are in the blocks. We need to be able to do more. And that's more of a storage problem because blockchains like Ethereum, they can't store a lot of data on the blockchain because that'll make everything too slow. That's why we have NFTs that are storing the video files or the pictures outside of the blockchain off chain, whereas Phantom, they'll be able to keep up more data than what Ethereum can hold in order to tell a story. So Phantom really aims to solve these problems with its innovations that creates potentially infinite scalability to process hundreds of thousands of transactions per second. Now for comparison, Ethereum can only do just about 30 transactions per second right now. And even with Ethereum 2.0, there'll be up to 65,000 transactions per second as far as I know. So the game with Phantom is that they virtually aim to verify blocks asynchronously without the approval from miners like in all other blockchains, which makes them completely different from all of the blockchains as well. But now we're going to talk about the things that you guys might be loathing, the technology, but I'll try to make it as painless as possible. Phantom's Opera Chain really solves the existing problem with existing blockchains of scalability with their rapid processing of blocks on a very, very large scale. And the chain also records historical data that they call story data. And this whole entire Opera Chain is intended to process up to 300,000 transactions per second, which is 
10,000 times more faster than the current Ethereum implementation. And how Phantom improves security and performance is with their new Latchless Consensus Protocol, which like other blockchains is a Byzantine fault tolerance protocol. So in a way, Phantom is kind of like the MENA protocol that I talk about here because the blocks are verified and they are continually verified. There's more validity to them as more and more blocks are added on top of them. And when we have a double spending issue that occurs, then what it does is it takes the first of the two identical transactions and takes that instead. And whereas other blockchains require every node to participate in the consensus algorithm, the Latchis algorithm lets a node make a new block and verifies the block by sending messages to other nodes. This is what forms the chain. On the other hand, the Latchis algorithm itself is really important because it forms the main chain and determines the order of the events for the blocks, which doesn't require communication with every other node like in other blockchains. If that was way too technical, like I realized just right now, then here's the analogy. Imagine you're in a class, you're doing your schoolwork and how you check it in one way is you go and talk to every single student in that class, let's say a class of 30 students, that is gonna take some time. But what happened if you have the answers at the back of the book? Huh, now things are gonna be much faster because instead of asking every single other student to verify the correctness of your answer, you could just check with the back of your book. This is the exact same thing that is happening on the Phantom chain right now. So how I see it, I imagine Phantom is kind of like Ethereum with Polygon already built into it because it can verify blocks concurrently. Because you know, if you've watched my previous video, I always say that Ethereum is like a one lane road and Polygon is the thing that turns that one lane road into a multi-lane highway. FTM already has that multi-lane highway built in. Now FTM has this cool thing called the story protocol for recording and managing variable values, like the historical data from the production to the distribution of each product. Huh, now that sounds like it already has B-Chain built in. No other blockchain that I know of so far has an Ethereum, a Polygon, and a V-Chain fusion. And that's not all. They also have something called the reputation protocol where participants like consumers, suppliers, deliverers, delivery agencies can rate each other. And I don't think I'm on crack and I'm not seeing dragons right now, but I dare say, good sir, that this is a chimera that also has an Amazon built on top of this Ethereum V-Chain Polygon hybrid. Didn't know why I started to do a British accent there that really just failed and turned into a Chinese accent, which finally turned into proper English. Well, kind of proper English. But like Steve Jobs always say, there's one more thing. Phantom also has a reward protocol that basically says use the platform correctly and will reward you with transaction tokens or better search ranking results and etc. So not only is it a Ethereum, Polygon, VeChain, Amazon hybrid, but it is also an American Express system that has its own reward point system. Now we're going to talk about an example, the use cases, and we're going to use food delivery as one of the use cases. The transaction protocol for Phantom's Opera Chain makes it easy to use in the food delivery service. Basically, an application that is written by smart contracts that are running on the Opera chain would enable money to be escrowed in a smart contract. So when the food is finally delivered, the smart contract would automatically pay out to the restaurant or the deliverer. Whereas if there was an issue, the restaurant or the deliverer can go ahead and refund the customer. And that is all done by the smart contract. So we see that with the use of smart contracts, we don't need a third party. Once certain conditions are met, the smart contract itself takes action such as releasing the money or refunding the money. Now, tokenomics wise, I think that Phantom's token distribution is really, really fair. There are 3.175 billion Phantom tokens and 40% of that went to token sale, 30% of that went to market development, 15% to advisors and contributors, and 15% to the Phantom team and founders. So here is really the pie chart for the token distribution. And you can go on and read where they actually use that Phantom capital, you know, like marketing expenses, operating expenses, things like that. So I think that how they distributed, how much the founders and the team gets are really fair compared to the whole pie. So Phantom really has two notable partners that I want to mention, Korea Food Tech Association and Oracle Corporation. Now we all know about Oracle, so we're not going to talk about that. But food technology, food tech industry is a new industry where traditional food industry is combined with information and communication technology to make changes in all value chains, including production, processing, distribution, and services. And it is a major area of the fourth industrial revolution. And Korea 
foresees creation of 300,000 new jobs through the food tech industry over the next 10 years in areas such as delivery, smart farms, data, food safety, and education. And this food tech association consists of around 80 companies, including businesses engaged in food tech platform, information services, delivery services, food-related infrastructure, online food ingredient distribution contents, and shared franchise forums. So the thing here is that not only is K-pop entertainment, Squid Games, not going to be the only exports of Korea. If this works, if the food tech revolution does happen, that's going to blow them up. That's not only going to blow up Korea in terms of their economy, but also FTM. And the run that we've seen with Solana in 2021, they might make a joke about that if FTM gets this going with the food tech revolution. Well, that's all I got for you guys. I am really looking into the price levels for FTM so I can get in myself. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already done so, please smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. Check out these other videos on cryptocurrencies and passive income. And I'll see you next time. Peace.